Alright guys, well welcome to this CAD Dimensions Lunch and Learn. My name is Jesse. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 enhancements for 2016. Uh, obviously in our rollout events we've got half a day to go over you know, the enhancements for any given release and even then we're squeezing things together so a half an hour is definitely uh, going to be... Uh, Going to be trimmed down so i've gone with the top 10 uh, of my favorite ones some of them are kind of uh, enhancement topics so i've got a couple of them uh, in there but we'll try to stuff in as many cool things as we can in this short bit of time hopefully i uh, will end around half an hour and without too much jibber jabber let's get going all right so my top 10 2016 enhancements feel free to add your own drum roll in Number one is going to be the interface. The interface got some really cool enhancements for this year, and I'm sure if you've installed 2016 and started playing with it, you've definitely noticed uh, at least a few of these. So let's take a look at what some of those are. The most obvious enhancement that they've added for 2016 in the interface is going to be the icons. And again, that's one that you probably noticed as soon as you loaded it up. Uh, they've changed a few colors for this year's uh, scheme. And you can actually see in that little uh, updated icons screenshot that I've got there, a little comparison between some of the ones that you saw in 2015 compared to the ones you see in 2016. Uh, it wasn't just a color change that they made. They actually added some different resolution uh, icons in there, tried to make them a little bit more clear. So there's a little better contrast for uh, to make them a little bit easier to see. Uh, these are intended to be uh, scaled easier towards the high resolution, uh, you know, displays that are coming out as that hardware technology progresses. Uh, SolidWorks has to keep its interface up to date as well. And that's one of the things that they've done there. So if you do have a nice, you know, 4K display at your at your desk, uh, I'm envious, and you'll be able to take advantage of some of those things with uh, SolidWorks 2016 interface. To be perfectly honest with you, when I loaded SolidWorks 2016, I wasn't really wild about uh, the the color change and just the interface change in general. But I will say I came around on it pretty quickly. So I think you guys will as well. So don't be too afraid to to get in there and start using it. Uh, I think it will grow on you quite quickly. I was in 2000. 15 just the other day uh, testing things out and it's like boy this does look kind of weird now that I'm uh, now that I've been in 2016 for a little bit uh, updated triad is the second thing that I have on my list and you can see that on the uh, image that we've got on the right hand side there the hula hoops were always a little bit tough to figure out what direction things were going and maybe select them they all tended to kind of blend together as to which ones were which. Sometimes you had to kind of rotate the whole thing around to try to figure out which one to even select. And hopefully that's been eliminated for 2016. And now you'll see that the, the hula hoops and the arrow directions, they're all sort of uh, in plane. So you can kind of see which direction they're going a little bit easier, makes a little bit more sense. And uh, I've definitely appreciated that change there. We've got some bi-directional dynamic referencing arrows this year. So 2015 gave us the option to uh, be able to see some of those you know, parent-child relationships visually uh, as they went up the tree anyway. And in 2016, you'll see those do go both directions. I have a screenshot coming up here that we can take a look at so you can see sort of what those look like. Another addition that they made, which is uh, my favorite addition for sure to the interface for 2016, is the breadcrumbs. Another one, I wasn't really sold on it when I first installed 2016. I was like, oh man, it's kind of just another thing to clutter up my interface. But um, as we get to the end of the presentation, you'll see this is one that's on my list for can't live without enhancements that we've got in 2016. I use these all over the place now, and I'm, I'm definitely glad that they added that in. Um, quickly became one of my favorite enhancements for 16. So let me move to the next uh, slide here where I've got a screenshot we can kind of take a peek so on the left hand side you can see some of the bi-directional dynamic referencing arrows there you can see they do go both ways now uh, those will turn off the same way so if you right click at the top level of your tree you'll be able to toggle those on and off I like them I think it's really nice when you're uh, editing especially if you're moving things around the tree to be able to just take a quick glance and you know understand where those references are the breadcrumbs you can see up in the top left corner of the graphics area. Um, what I really like about the breadcrumbs is that they are capable of moving right to your cursor so you don't have to go hunting for them. And I'll explain a little bit more on, on how these work as we go so I won't talk too much about them right now. Uh, we'll take a closer look at those uh, as we go. And of course the icon updates is the first thing you're going to notice when you install and start playing with 2016. You'll see uh, things look a little bit different and I do like it. 
All right, so that are a couple of those are a couple of things that you'll notice in the interface for 2016. Next on my list is sweeps. Now, sweeps have been changed around fairly drastically, I think, for 2016. They still work in the same way, but I think if this was sweeps in 2015, uh, I think we're sweeping, you know, with a little bit more power in 2016. So we've got some uh, some good horsepower behind our sweeps for 2016, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So the first thing is we do now have a bi-directional sweep, uh, which is really nice. This gives us a lot more flexibility in working with our sweeps. Of course, bi-directional, I mean, we can have our profile in the middle of the path, so we can go both directions at once. In years past, of course, we'd have to have that profile all the way at the end of our uh, path and then sweep in one direction. Uh, that limitation has been removed, and you can kind of see how that process works here. So I fired off a sweep procedure, and you can see underneath your options for profile and path, you can choose what direction you want to go. In this case, I'm going both directions with that. So uh, we can combine that with other features that the sweep offers. In this case, we got a little twist along path there. Um, and you can see that kind of raw iron shape being made you know, very easily. So pretty cool, definitely uh, builds in some extra flexibility for uh, working with sweeps and kind of takes some of those restrictions out of the picture. Another thing that they've added for sweeps, and I think this is definitely huge for 2016, is the ability to uh, not have to draw circular profiles every time we want to make a sweep with a circular profile. This comes in a lot, things like in this case we're making a spring, but if you've got you know a pipe or a, a tube, um, if you're even you know cutting, maybe a cut sweep, you're making holes in, in interesting directions, this is uh, a really nice way to do that. And you can see here if I start this off you can switch over to a, a circular profile and then just put in the size of that profile and then SOLIDWORKS does the rest of the work so you just have to say here's the path put this profile you know this shape uh, this particular size on there and let SOLIDWORKS do the rest of the work there is an option for thin feature under there which you can see uh, so again if you are doing tubes or something like that that works out really really nicely definitely a nice time saver uh, when we're working with sweeps All right, number three on the list is the thread tool. I think I can hear, was that, are you guys clapping? You're all muted, but somehow I, th I think I can still hear some clapping there. Definitely one that's been a long time coming. And uh, the sweep tool is kind of expanded this year into being able to uh, do uh, threading operations and it's set up specifically as its own separate tool. Uh, so let's take a look at how that works. Again, we have the ability to do uh, standard threads, which is uh, shows up in a database kind of like this, uh, as well as custom threads, and I'll show that in a moment as well. So here you can see uh, all we've got to do is just select the uh, references where we want these to go, specify the size of it, and you even have some control over the offsets of those. And uh, that's that. A couple of clicks and you've got a full helical uh, sweep in there that's creating threads. It can be external threads, uh, cut, you know, or uh, added to the outside. So you can go either direction with those. Here's a case of a custom thread profile that we have drawn up and included in, uh, added into our database here. And you can see we have this nice little feed screw that is very easily generated by the use of the new thread tool. And pretty cool, definitely a great way to save time um, on any of those things. Again, just a reminder, uh, oftentimes you're not wanting to put that kind of detail if you've got lots of parts in your top level assemblies or something like that. But if you're machining these, uh, you know, custom threads or something like that, or you do need those threads in there for some particular reason, uh, this is definitely a quick way to get there. Or if you want them in there and you want to make a configuration that just removes them for your top level assembly or something like that, that's a perfect application for it. All right, moving along here, next on my list, I've got the automatic border tool. And this is a pretty cool one. Uh, this pertains to drawings specifically. And what this tool allows you to do is to uh, work with your sheet format. Now, um, a lot of you guys have had these sheet formats set up for years and years. Uh, and you just kind of run with the same templates that have all been been saved for a long time And I think that 2016 is probably a good time, um, you know, if you can to update some of these things 
Uh, we've got some nice enhancements over the past few years for working with, you know, your drawing sheets. Um, zone lines is definitely a big one because we now have the uh, zone markers that will be able to, uh, you know, you can use that location label to identify where things are on the sheet and they will update, uh, you know, based on where you have your zone lines set. Uh, it was a really nice enhancement that we got last year, but you had to kind of set your zone lines up somewhat, you know, manually uh, in most cases. Well, and this year we've got a tool that will actually let us uh, do that with much greater ease. Uh, so we can take a look at that here. So we've got a sheet format uh, tab itself. Uh, I've added my layer properties right to this tab just so I've got kind of everything in one place. Um, and uh, from that layer pro properties, I'll just go in there and, and we'll just turn off the uh, title block specifically. Now the reason why I turn off the title block in this case or put that title block in a different uh, a different layer is that we can actually auto clear the existing uh, formats here. So you can see that uh, the next step will go into edit sheet format and switch over to our automatic border tool. And from here we can say, I wanna take all this and just remove it. So we can blank this whole thing and just start right over from scratch, which happens almost instantly. So we can say, as soon as we go to the next step, we can say, this is the, the number of divisions that I want. You can see kind of toggling through those. And again, these do work with the zone lines. Now here's a case where I've got this section over here that I'm sort of highlighting, and I want to remove some of the border in that area. And we can do that just by adding in a mask wherever we want that to go. We can say, okay, with that, and we'll just turn on our zone line so you can see that they do actually uh, line up there. So you can see uh, wherever I have those divisions, you can see those zone lines lining up. And again, those will be accessible for your location labels and things like that. Uh, definitely a nice way to get things all lined up and, and set. Um, again, I recommend, you know, if you haven't updated your templates in several years, um, 2016 might be the year to do it. And this is a, a great way to get those uh, done very quickly. So we'll say okay to that. And now we can turn on our, our title block again. And again, if we had something uh, you know, down here, maybe notes or something that would fit into there, they're not gonna be overwritten by the border and we didn't have to go, you know, go in there and do that all by hand. So definitely a nice tool for 2016 and a good way to refresh some of your old data and just uh, keep right on rolling with those new templates. All right, number five on my list is the Surface Flatten. Surface Flatten is actually not a new tool for 2016, it's a new tool for 2015, uh, and they did get some nice enhancements to it for this year. I think that really kind of rounds out the tool's capabilities. So we'll take a look here, just a reminder, uh, this tool is actually a premium tool because it does need to mesh that surface. Uh, but what we've added in for capabilities is the, uh, the ability to accommodate for holes, uh, extra curves we can build in now and relief cuts are also supported. Uh, so let's take a look at how that, that works. So launching the tool here, we can see uh, just selecting the surface itself and a reference for that. And it'll go ahead and mesh that surface and flatten it out. Now we do have the option to turn on deformation plot. Again, this wasn't new for 2016, but we'll notice that um, there was some uh, strain around the outside of those. Uh, now, including some relief cuts here, you can see I've selected a couple of relief cuts, and as soon as I do that, we get this little uh, split in that surface, and we'll see as we continue here, if I go back, you'll notice now we don't have uh, so much of that activity on the outside. We've relieved some of the stress in this surface and getting this to wrap into this area. Now I mentioned that we also do have uh, options for adding in additional curves and we've got this little arrow that kind of loops around the inside here. We want to flatten that as well, but it's not its own surface. Uh, the surface flatten tool can accommodate for that this year as well. So if we uh, continue on here, um, we can allow that to pick up that information. So I'll grab those entities and you can see uh, that picking up. Now one note while we're here, and I don't have this included in my list, but you'll notice that in 2016 all of these dialog boxes will auto scale. So as you're adding things in there, they'll extend themselves or compress themselves to include what options you have. You also have the little dot underneath so you can move these up or down so you don't have to go scrolling, 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 looking for things that'll kind of uh, work more organically with you this year, which is really, really nice. So I've included that final option in there. And now when we say okay to that, we'll turn off the deformation plot. 
And there we have it. It's flattened that arrow as well. And some pretty cool options that they've added into the Surface Flatten. And definitely, like I said, kind of rounds out the capabilities of that tool uh, and certainly makes it more effective in, uh, in more situations. Next on my list is an assembly option that we've got for 2016 copy components is what we're talking about here. And I really like this option. Uh, what this allows us to do is take multiple components and essentially do kind of like a copy with mates, but without having to uh, work through any dialog boxes. So what we'll see here is that I've got um, an assembly. It's got uh, just a bunch of components in it, top level, and I want to duplicate sort of a sub assembly, but it's not a, an actual sub assembly. And with a simple copy and paste, in this case, I use control C, control V, we'll see that all of those mates are retained. So as I move that around now, before I get to, oops, sorry about that. Before I get too far ahead of myself here, let's go back to that. Um, you'll see that uh, those components are uh, copied over. They get all of their mates. So whatever mates are applicable to only the components that are copied will be uh, retained. So we'll see that again here as I select those components. Control C, Control V, copy them over. You'll see as I drag them around, they all maintain their uh, association with each other. Um, one other thing that they've added in 2016, sort of, I guess, interface related, but in this case fits uh, fairly well is uh, easier accessibility to a tool that we got last year for uh, temporary fix or temporary group components. Uh, all we've got to do now is just right click into open space and we can access that tool. And you'll see that's where I was going here when I right click temporary fix or group and I'll just temporarily fix this component here and that will allow me to kind of illustrate uh, that those uh, mates are retained. Don't forget about that tool and again it's on the right click for 2016 so just right click in open space and you can gain access to that as definitely a tool that I've been using a lot uh, and a lot more in 16 to be honest with you than I did in 2015. Uh, if you guys are still on 2015 it's under move component originally now just on the right click. Definitely awesome functionality uh, with being able to just kind of work with things as you would sort of expect them to work. Anything that applies gets copied over. Uh, definitely speeds up some time and consideration there. Cool. So uh, moving on to a couple of more assembly things. We've got some really nice assembly enhancements, actually, I think this year. Uh, mate accessibility is the next one that I want to talk about. And uh, this is just in regards to uh, how you get to your mates. They've moved things into shortcuts uh, a little bit more this year, some shortcuts that already existed. And that's the case with uh, this one here, just in terms of control, selecting different uh, bits of geometry to gain access to your, your mates. Um, and again, this tool was here. They've just added more capability to it. So the first one is the profile center mate has been added to control select, which is awesome, right? More cheering. Uh, this is one that I've been waiting for since they introduced the profile center mate. It's an awesome tool. It was just a little bit buried and now it's, it's very easy to get to. So again, if we select a couple of faces here, just holding control in this case, the profile center mate shows up on the far right and we still have all of the options that would have been available to us um, if we used the, you know, the tool right from the mate dialogue like we had in, in years past. One of the things that I really liked about the profile center mate was the ability that it had to work with um, uh, with restricting rotation. So you could use one mate to uh, fit something you know cylindrically together and uh, and have that also restrict the rotation of it. That's been retained for 2016 as well. Uh, if we continue here, you can see putting this piece of hardware in, we can control select. I use the edges just so I get that in there quickly. And again, lock rotation is one of the options there. So we hit lock rotation, hit OK. And now what again, what we've done is with uh, with one mate with just a couple of clicks with control without having to enter into any dialog box or get back in or out, um, we've added a, a a piece of hardware into where it was supposed to go and locked its rotation with only one top level mate. So this is going to be huge for uh, working, you know, performance wise, working with assemblies of any kind of scale, really, um, you know, always reducing those top level mates is, is a good thing to think about as you're working. So uh, that is something that will certainly help and just being able to access that very quickly um, will make it all the more useful. 
The other two that I want to talk about is the symmetric uh, mate and also the width mate have been added to the shortcuts as well. So we'll see if you make, uh, you know, three parallel face selections, you'll get your, um, in this case, parallel, we'll get those uh, as a symmetric mate. If I add an additional one to the fourth, then we get it as a width mate. And you'll notice that order isn't really important there. Just snag those four and that width mate becomes available to us. So those uh, have been made easier to access as well. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is our temporary transparency. And this is a pretty neat option as well. Uh, what this allows us to do is in cases like this where we uh, add a mate to a couple of components and we say you know make those concentric i've gotten myself into a spot here where uh, i can no longer gain access to this component because i've made it right inside the other one now at this point usually we just hit undo and try to move that to somewhere where that mate doesn't uh, pull that inside but in 2016 we don't have to do that we can work with uh, really whatever we have so if we launch the mate dialog box in 2016 whatever our first selection is it will turn it transparent so you can see in this case I make that one selection my whole body goes transparent I can gain access to the faces that I needed and move on with the next mating scenario so uh, again anytime you're using the mate dialog box itself it doesn't does not work with the uh, mate shortcuts because it doesn't know that you're going to go to a mate until you actually select from the shortcut menu but uh, from the mate tool itself any first selection you make in 2016 will turn that transparent so you can work with anything that may be uh, near it and then you can continue again as soon as you hit okay it just pops itself back out so definitely a nice workflow uh, addition for working with mates in uh, 2016. Uh, my last addition to this category to mate accessibility is to breadcrumbs and again I'll kind of explain a little bit more of uh, scenarios where I use uh, breadcrumbs quite a bit and uh, so if I uh, select, make some selection here, we see that I've uh, chosen this component and I've hit D on my keyboard to bring those breadcrumbs to me. So again, they pop up in the top left corner. Typically, uh, D on the keyboard brings those to my cursor. And from here, we can see that we have um, all sorts of options in terms of selection. And we really have the whole hierarchy of what we would be able to access from the tree itself. So I have information on the subassembly. I've got information on the part, on the body, on the feature, on the face, and you'll see that on the part I have access to all its uh, mates. On the feature I've got access to its sketch. So anything that I would typically be going to the tree to find, I now have access to right from my D key. So I make a selection, hit D, and then I can filter those out. So uh, what we'll see is that as I uh, move through, we can even you know right click on these things and you'll see that these uh, dialog boxes are applicable to whatever it is I'm selecting. You can see even in the graphics uh, window, now I'm just selecting information for the body itself. Again, down to the feature, you can see the feature being highlighted from that part down to the face level. Uh, and again, any of those uh, mates that you see accessible, you can see those highlight as I move over them. So really select something, hit D, and you can gain access to just about anything that you would have ever needed to get access to without the uh, breadcrumbs. Again, you're zipping your mouse back and forth across the, uh, the window to gain access to these things where now it's all just brought right to you. So a huge time savings with the breadcrumbs, and I really, really do like them. I, I urge you to give them a try. Just hit D on your keyboard and see what you can get access to. Okay, moving swiftly along here to the component preview window. Now the component preview window is uh, almost sort of related to that temporary transparency that we were just looking at a moment ago. And the way that this works is it will break up your assembly into two panes for you automatically, but the two panes are kind of linked together, which is pretty neat. So what this allows us to do uh, is if I just select this subassembly and choose the component preview window, you can see that I can now work with these two things in independent ways but they're still linked together. So you can see I can make my selections from uh, either window, whichever is easiest to gain access to. In this case, again, I just control selected a mate across those and I can work with it from either direction. Now it does work like isolate. So if I just hit exit preview, then we're right back to where we are and we're back to the main assembly. So you can very easily get in and out of uh, the, the component preview window. And it definitely makes mating uh, a lot easier when you're uh, moving back and forth, especially in obscured places. Pretty cool tool. 
All right, the Mate controller. I've got, I told you I had a lot of assembly things that I really like this year in 2016. This tool is absolutely awesome. What this allows us to do is to take complex motion and make it very simple to control. Uh, now, there's a lot of degrees of freedom in this particular robotic arm, and you can see that I've got uh, a couple of things that I, I have the ability to do. So what we've done is we've clicked in the mates that are critical con to controlling this. So you can see we've got some angle mates in here uh, and things like that that are controlling the locations of uh, these components and the great thing about this is we can actually save these so I've got uh, a list here that you'll see in just a moment that will save different uh, positions for these mates and we can kind of store these up and uh, and keep them all organized so now uh, here's the list that we've got of different positions and you can see it will just kind of snap to those uh, positions and again, we've got the ability to add new positions, save new positions. Uh, so we'll just create a new position here, whatever we call it, doesn't matter. Uh, and we can control on a one by one basis um, these individual mates that will, uh, you know, have an impact on just the critical critical ones. Now we can also unlock these for the graphics view. So you can see I've unlocked two mates that I can now uh, visually drag and we can store that information up and even animate it all right so it's again retaining those locations and just kind of going in between those uh, pre-saved items so a really cool way to uh, very quickly get fluid motion out of a very complex assembly uh, definitely one that i've been playing with quite a bit uh, since i've loaded up 2016. All right, number 10 on my list is multi-body visibility. Uh, this, I have two different items that I want to throw into this category. The first one is uh, simply the addition of tab and shift tab into multi-bodies. I didn't think this would actually be as handy as it actually is. So this uh, was a relatively new tool within the past few years, I think for um, assemblies. And uh, this allows us to kind of move over components and sort of tab them out of the way. Uh, this now applies to uh, multi-body parts as well, which is really nice. Anytime I, I find that there is something that I can use in multiple parts of uh, SolidWorks in multiple scenarios, I'm much more likely to use it. And that's exactly the case with this. Now that I can do this with multi-body parts, I use it in assemblies more than I even did before. So uh, again, what this looks like is as we're hovering over components, as we hit tab, those will automatically be hidden. And as we hit shift tab, they will come back. So this is definitely by far faster than going into the bodies folder and try to find those, unhide them again. We can just sort of on the fly hide and bring back items uh, knowing where they are sort of in space. So I've been using this uh, left and right. And again, I, I ended up using this in assemblies more than I even did before because I can kind of use it in multiple, multiple places. So uh, definitely a cool option that I, um, I've been enjoying since loading 2016. The other thing that I want to talk about with uh, multi-body is specific to surfacing and actually a specific surfacing tool, and that is in Trim Surface. Uh, Trim Surface now has multiple view options, so we can kind of preview that and find out what our trim is actually going to look like. Uh, a lot of times with complex trimming operations, it's really difficult to try to figure out if you've even selected the right uh, the right sections of your surfaces to get the final result that you're looking for. Um, I, I feel like half the time I go in, I think I got everything and then I realize I missed one. I got to go edit the feature and come back. And then 2016, they, they fixed that up for us. And now you can see here the three different options that we have available. So as we're trimming surfaces together, again, you can see the final result of included surfaces. We can see the excluded surfaces, and then we can see them both in kind of a hybrid view where we've got the included surfaces that are shown uh, in opaque and then uh, sort of semi-transparent. You'll see the ones that are um, to be removed. So definitely a quicker result there and trying to figure out what, um, what surfaces are what in complex trimming operations. Okay, uh, so that is my list of top 10 enhancements for 2016. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. If you guys have any questions on any of these uh, particular, you can um, give us a ring, let us know uh, on how they, how they work or, uh, or anything like that. Um, we do have uh, we do have some videos out from uh, some of the other sessions in our uh, what's new so you can check those out. Uh, those are up on the on the web. 
Uh, some of the things that I mentioned here that I, I do find my kind of can't live without enhancements out of this list. Um, the interface is uh, definitely has grown on me for sure and specifically breadcrumbs. Uh, I use those uh, a lot. The copy components I've been really enjoying along with the mate accessibility. Um, also the uh, multi-body visibility that we were just talking about being able to kind of fluidly work back and forth and get things in and out of my way. Um, I've been using that quite a bit. Now, just because I can't keep my mouth shut, uh, here are a few other things that I do really enjoy that I've kind of picked out that I couldn't find a good spot for. Uh, the intersect tool, if you've talked to me before, I've probably talked about the intersect tool because it's one of my favorites. The intersect tool got a really cool enhancement for this year that allows us to uh, create internal volumes of things uh, very quickly and you know, just intersect with a plane or something like that and get internal volumes, uh, saving it a ton of time in operations like that. Uh, global mate replacement uh, v2 if you will so we got global mate replacement last year and that is that we have the ability to uh, to fix a broken mate reference and have it apply anywhere else that that reference was used in 2016 that still works but it's been expanded to apply to multiple components so if you pick up uh, make a change to um, to components that have several instances uh, that will break that mate it now acro applies across the board so um, it definitely makes things much easier to work more fluidly with assemblies and you have to be you know less careful with uh, well you always want to be careful but you have to be less concerned with uh, changing things around because you can very easily fix things that um, that you might have uh, changed drastically. Uh, we can now edit multiple toolbox instances at once. Uh, oftentimes those two kind of go together, the global mate replacement and the multiple toolbox instances. So if you uh, change to say even a different, completely different type of hardware for multiple components, you can very quickly get them back in place with that uh, new capabilities of the global mate replacement, which works very nicely. Uh, the toolbox does actually have a favorites option uh, or a folder rather built right into it now. Uh, so typically there's a handful of toolbox components that you're using all the time and you got to go digging for those. Um, nice capability this year. They've got a, a favorites folder. You can just drag your favorites in there and you've got quick access to those. We also have a flag note bank that they added for uh, drawings. And what this allows us to do is uh, to create our notes with uh, little callouts that update with each other. So you can update uh, according to a certain uh, callout shape or something like that. Uh, they'll stay linked together and then you can reference those elsewhere in the drawing. So kind of a nice uh, way to keep track of things that are uh, little callouts like that. You'll also notice on your drawings uh, towards the bottom right where you would typically see you know, your uh, shortcut for units, you'll also see a sheet scale shortcut. So you can now directly right from the bottom of the page uh, change your sheet scale without having to go hunting for that, which is a nice little change. Uh, also for drawings, we have the ability to rearrange stack balloons. You can kind of shift drag those around and work m uh, much more fluidly with those in 2016. So a few little other options that uh, I think are, are pretty cool enhancements this year um, that you'll get as a, as a freebie. Um, so at this point, if you guys have any questions, you can uh, type those into, the, um, into the, the webinar here and I'll be online to answer those. If not, thanks for sticking with me for some of the highlights for 2016. And of course, if you have any questions, you just let us know. Thanks guys. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.